Hi everyone. My name is John Lenehan and I work with Hibernia College in Ireland. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how we built a student portal using WordPress. The portal we built services about 3,000 students and about 600 staff and adjunct faculty. Hibernia College delivers its courses and programs via blended learning. So our portal is our gateway into our online services, websites and apps. So it's really important. Some time ago, we ran a series of workshops to try and answer the question, what might teaching and learning look like for our students in five to 10 years? And although there are many outcomes from these workshops, one particular outcome was around the quality of our user experience online and the quality of our user interfaces. In particular, we know that our students have exposure to really advanced social media platforms with rich interfaces, huge investment, and also really focused, strong UI apps on their devices. Where education sometimes uses open source systems, the UI and UX can be poor. So we wanted to see how can we get our portal to be as good as some of the other systems they are using. The challenges we faced at the time were, we were using Drupal as our portal, and that was hosted and managed by an external company. And over time, we had lots of ideas to change the UI to make the user experience better for students. But sometimes by the time those projects were specced out and we tried to get finance to do it, maybe they were cancelled for various reasons. And all these problems compounded over many years with the result that students had a poor user experience on the platform. So we need something a bit more local, something that a local team here could react and build much quicker. Our requirements for the portal that it must have been private and it must be linked to our single sign-on. It should be easy for staff to create content. You should be able to personalize the content that students see when they come into the portal. We didn't want it generic. We want students to see contextual information based on the course or the program they're on. It had to be secure, but it also needed to be a modern style to match this, these UIs that we are noticing. So we looked at many platforms out there, but we said, WordPress has so much comfort, we've got to try to see if we can match all of this functionality that our Drupal system had. It's open source, it's got a huge community and loads of plugins. And it's easier to manage that WordPress system than it is a Drupal system. And that suited our non-developer digital learning team. We needed to create a portal for students that we could manage without having huge code experience. Just to show you what experience we had, I've been using WordPress for 10 years, but not necessarily as a developer. Yes, I have developed some small, or I've coded some changes for websites and themes over the years and, and fixed various problems. But this project was a no code project. Other staff were familiar with WordPress because our main marketing site is built in WordPress. So we had some familiarity, but as I say, this was a no code approach. So how do you create a private WordPress site? WordPress is a public site. It's made to share and distribute content across the web. So we have to find a way to restrict it. We also need to find a way to have a unique experience for students. How do we make the link between what cohort a student is in to what information they see in the WordPress site? We were aware of many membership site plugins and stuff. So I'm going to talk about how we approached it. I identified three stages that were required to make the portal a success. Number one, all of our student, staff and adjunct faculty users all log in using Office 365 single sign-on. So it had to work with that. When the user logged in, we needed WordPress to be able to figure out what group they were in in Office 365 and then ass assign a specific WordPress role. And then we needed to display content in WordPress based on those WordPress roles. Easy. So we achieved all of this with three plugins, WP Front User Editor, the Mini Orange SAML plugin, and the Block Visibility plugin. 
So to start with WP Front, just to give you an idea about it, we use that to create WordPress roles. It has a lot of other functionality, which I'll show you. Now, there are many plugins in the WordPress repository that can create roles, but what we liked about WP Front, it has a lot of the features you need to build a membership site or to restrict content all in the one place, which suited maybe, you know, a, a non-technical team. And in this example here, you can just see a role being created that coincides with the cohort name that we have as a student group. We spent a lot of time looking at plugins and how do we connect WordPress to our Office 365 infrastructure and authentication. And we tested many ideas, but Mini Orange SAML plugin was the one that has worked and has worked really well for us in the last year. And this makes a connection between your WordPress and your Microsoft Office 365. It allows students to authenticate and it allows you to match WordPress roles that you've created with your Office 365 groups. So once a student or staff or adjunct faculty authenticates, they're automatically assigned WordPress roles in WordPress every time they log in. So this was great because now we know who the user is in WordPress after their authentication. And in this screenshot here, this is from a student profile. You can see that that student has been assigned to this particular program. So now we know who the user is, we can contextually show them content. So the other functionality that I referred to with WP Front User Editor is that it allows you to restrict posts and pages. It allows you to create short codes that you can wrap around words, sentences, or paragraphs. You can manage menu link visibility, and you can also manage redirects. So if you have students that need to be redirected to a specific area based on what Office 365 group they're in, you can send them to a certain page, which is useful, or post. This is a screenshot of the WP Front User Editor plugin. And this particular set of checkboxes is added to the end of every page or post you can select which WordPress roles can see that page or post. And you can also specifically give them read, edit, or delete access for behind the scenes. The other plugin I mentioned was the Block Visibility plugin by Nick Diego. This is a wonderful plugin for managing and restricting who can see blocks on a page. There are many different ways to restrict the visibility of blocks, whether it's time-based, whether people are logged in or not, or even down to a specific user. We used it with user roles, and we just said this block is available to everyone with this user role. So using a combination of these plugins, we had great granularity across all of the content on the website. We could have the ability to restrict pages and posts, menu items, blocks, and paragraph sentence and words. So that's a huge amount of flexibility and power. This is an example of our final product. This is a particular homepage that's been set up for our teaching students. And every element on this page can be changed based on who you are. This is the same page that has been changed for our nursing students. And as you can see, the same page with different blocks showing. So really powerful, really useful. So just a word on theme selection. We spent a lot of time looking at themes and we spent a lot of time looking at options out there. We looked at page builders and their parent themes, uh, theme frameworks. Now it turned out that theme frameworks were probably too complex for what we needed. And we didn't decide to go with page builders. We said we'd give Gutenberg a try. So the theme that kind of made in the middle for us was Generate Press. It provides an easy way for no code layouts. You can manage stuff like global colors and styles across the site. There's great support forums, lots of users if you have a problem, and it's secure. That's something we need. We need themes and plugins that are regularly updated to make our site secure. The content within our pages and posts, well, we managed that and created that using Gutenberg blocks. And a big shout out to David Lockie from angrycreative.com and Jeff Mills from wpvip.com. These guys advised me, go use Gutenberg blocks. We were slow to use them. We were in favor of using page builders and other solutions. 
We went with Gutenberg blocks on the basis that they're baked into core and they are supported. And we used a combination of WordPress core blocks as well as other providers such as Generate Blocks and Cadence Blocks. Now, there are many block providers out there that are really good. It just turns out that Generate Blocks and Cadence Blocks were really useful for us. A word on hosting. We use WP Engine. Um, we've used them for many years on our main marketing site. They do all the basics as standard, your daily backups, you know, development and staging servers, just for testing new ideas or testing plugins. And they have really good support. So, so they're really central to our kind of low tech, no code approach. They will help us solve any problems that we notice with the site. So just to recap, this is a screenshot of our old Drupal site. And Drupal can look well, but we needed a system not hosted by external developers or on Drupal, we needed an easy system that we could update locally in-house and WordPress answered that. And that allowed us to build the site we wanted with our UX designer, exactly where, how we wanted it and when we wanted it. Finally, thank you very much for listening to me for the last 10 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed it and got something from it. And if you're interested in building a portal in WordPress and you have any questions on anything I've presented today, these are my contact details, so please give me a shout. I hope you enjoy the rest of WP Campus. It's been great to be invited to talk here. Have a great time.